just like the U.S. Mint has a standard, God has a standard that man will be judged by. And so when we come to Romans chapter 2 verses 1 through 16, uh, Paul begins to explain to us and uh, tell us a little bit about that standard. And there's some different ideas that we're going to look at today. God's judgment is according to reality. God's judgment is according to integrity. God's judgment is according to opportunity. God's judgment is according to morality. And God's judgment is according to impartiality. We want to look at all five of those different aspects this morning in today's lesson. God's judgment is according to reality. If you look at Romans chapter 2, verse number 1, we'll just, we'll just look at each uh, point and the verses that apply to it individually. Therefore, thou art inexcusable, O man, whosoever thou art that judgest. For, where, for wherein thou judgest another, thou condemnest thyself. For thou that judgest dost the same things. Have you ever known somebody who had laser-like vision? When it came to pinpointing the faults of others, but they were severely myopic when it came to the idea of self-examination. Have you ever known somebody like that who could look at a situation and they could size somebody up just like that? They knew everything that was wrong about that person in just a few moments. And uh, I, that's a valuable thing. I, I'll tell you what, husbands, pay attention to your wives because women women have really good character meters most of the time. And, uh, you know, my wife will pick up something on somebody sometimes and, and I'll like, well, I didn't even notice that, you know. And then as I will we'll let that, that progression of that relationship, you know, kind of being on the fringes, and as you get to know that person a little bit more, you say, wow, she was really intuitive about that. That's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is that really hyperactive fault finding that some people are really, really good at. And what Paul is telling us here in this very first verse of chapter 2 is those people that seem to be hypersensitive to the faults of others have a deep fault of their own. And uh, it is usually that same thing. How many of you have ever heard the expression, it takes one to know one? The reason why they are so sensitive to that particular fault is because that is their own fault. And so I wrote in my notes, and I don't know if I wrote it in yours or not, that that is a tell. How many of you know what we're talking about when we talk about a quote, a tell? A tell is something that you do. It's a habit. It's a tick. It's something that you may do unconsciously that can be observed by someone that you're interacting with that tells them that you either mean the opposite or it tells them something about you. It's like when somebody is talking to you and you think that they're lying to you and you notice that they don't look at you when they're telling you what they're telling you. They, they avoid eye contact. That's a tell. And so Paul says that when somebody has this really hyperactive sensitivity about being able to find the faults in others, what they're telling you is they have that same problem in their own life. And so uh, that's the reality of uh, how God views the sin of man. Uh, being able <laughs> to pick these faults out of somebody else is not a virtue. And in fact, you know, we just spent a great deal of time in our last lesson. At the end of the lesson and, and right up to it, we had uh, the discussion about immorality, homosexuality, all these really just terrible wickedness was in there. Uh, all the different words that we discussed in the last lecture. And you say, well, you know, I don't, thankfully, I don't have any of those terrible things in my life. And what Paul is saying is just because you don't have these terrible vices in your life doesn't mean that you're full of virtue. That, the, that not having all of these sins in your life doesn't, by that void, make you virtuous. You have to, you, you could just be boring. <laughs> you know, you could just be a boring individual. It's not that you're, you're righteous. You, don't, you haven't imputed God's righteousness to you until it has been imputed, until you have accepted it and received it. There's a lot of moral people that are going to go to hell. There's a lot of uh, good people that are going to go to hell. And uh, just because you don't have these great sins 
and your life doesn't impart to you virtue. And so that's the reality of how God views the sin of man. Number two, God's judgment is according to integrity. If you look at the second and third verse there, but we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth against them which commit such things. And thinkest thou this, O man, that judgest them which do such things, and doest the same, that thou shalt escape the judgment of God? Have you ever wondered how somebody could say that something that you know is wrong is right? Um, and I, I wanted you to give examples this morning. I know that we're recording here and I'll repeat those things. But can you give an example that you had a discussion, maybe it even in, evolved into an argument with somebody that they just kept trying to tell you that something you knew was wrong was right? Can you give, a dis can you, can you give an example, Dominique? Somebody saying it's okay to drink wine. All right, can you give another example? That was not one of the ones that I was thinking of. I was thinking of some of the big ones. So, okay, I was thinking of I was thinking of something really big. A lot of times it gets in, included into um, political elections. Yes, sir, Brother Gary. Young people try to convince that it's okay. Yes, sexual impurity without the benefit of marriage. Okay, that's that's still not the big one. I think there's a, it starts with an A. Yes, Alan. Abortion. Yes. I I can't think of anything more insidious than the than what some of the justifications are for abortion. And can, can you give? me some of the justifications that you've heard for abortion where somebody tries to twist it around and makes a logical argument that sort of makes sense why abortion would be okay. Do you, what are the arguments, Carrie? All oh, right, a case of rape. They're, they're by themselves? Okay. Oh, the mom's health. Yeah, the health of the mother. Okay. Yeah, it's by the self. It's pretty selfish reason. Yes, go ahead. Birth effects. Birth effects. Okay. Hey, have you ever heard this one? Yeah, too young. This one is the one that I, that I heard from a believer that really bothered me. And I'm not going to identify who it was that said it. You know, it's better for that little baby to be in heaven with God than to be in a world where its parents don't really want it and it will be subject to abuse. So maybe that's God's way of taking care of that baby. That to me just made the hair on the back of my neck stand up and just about drove me nuts. Sue, you got your hand up. It'll ruin my life. Yeah. That, that's pretty selfish. Yeah. But but that one where they tried to make it sound like, well, it's better. The baby's going to heaven. That one just... that. But that's the way that uh, people try to justify things. I, I wrote down homosexuality. I, you guys didn't say that one. Uh, the argument that I've heard about homosexuality is this. Hey, if God didn't want me to be this way, then why did he make me this way? If God didn't, if God doesn't want people to be homosexuals, then why did He make them homosexuals to start with? That's that kind of makes sense to me uh, as far as an argument. I mean, if I look at it as strictly uh, the logic of the world, I can understand where somebody would make that uh, assumption. I don't believe that God makes homosexuals, but if somebody, it's, so it's a flawed premise. But if somebody asserted that argument to me, I could accept that they think that rather than. That I just want to be gay because I don't care what God says. You know, I would I would accept them kind of justifying it over the other. Um, of course, I don't believe that God makes homosexuals, and God's word tells us that He does. All right, and then this one is the kind of the one that I I kind of figured nobody would say, but that everybody could certainly relate to, and that is lying. Um, I was only deceptive because I wanted to spare your feelings. How many of you have ever had that? Had that? You know, you can understand what we're talking about. There.